for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dave Stokes. I've been coming to a lot of these uh, events that Todd Lewis and crew have been putting on for many years. Uh, always great events. Uh, my bosses are always impressed by the feedback we get from these shows. And what I'm talking about today is new features in MySQL. Uh, one of the things that's uh, frustrating in my job is that we come out with some new feature, but it's the old Pareto Optimum. 80% of our customers are using 20% of the features. I was giving this a similar talk, a uh, grandfather of this talk last year in the UK. And in the middle of it, I was mentioning a new feature. And this one gentleman was getting rather upset with me. And I could tell that he... Uh, was not happy. Anyway, at the end of the show, I thought he was going to uh, deliver a right cross to my nose. And he came up and said, you know, if I'd known about this four months ago, it would have saved me two months worth of work. So that's why I'm doing this talk. So safe harbor statement. I work for Oracle and Oracle wants you to know that I do not have perfect knowledge over things that are coming out in the future. Uh, if I mention a new product during Q&A or just in passing, uh, I might say it's blue. When you think uh, sky blue, I'm thinking royal blue and ends up being blue cheese. So please take anything I say about uh, future products with a grain of salt. By the way, if you're running MySQL 5.6, the end of life is February 5th, 2021. Uh, please plan to upgrade to 5.7 at least or hopefully 8.0. By the way, if you are running 5.7, you can run our new shell, which has an upgrade checker. You type in util check for upgrade and give the uh, root password and uh, root account name. And we'll go out there and tell you if you have things like uh, reserved words violations, uh, if you're going to have troubles converting over to UTF-8 MB4, if you have any key constraint problems, if you're using the old temp table format. Um, it's a, a very handy tool and well worth the effort of, of trying it. So... A little about me. Uh, many years ago, I was working at the American Heart Association when this new database called MySQL came out, immediately loaded on my Red Hat 4 box. Uh, that's not RHEL 4, that's the original RHEL Hat, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux 4. Uh, been using it in many projects. Uh, good part of my career, I was... Uh, uh, oh, I'm supposed to double click on these and zoom to get these larger, okay. Let me see if I can get that over there. Ah, here we go. Of course, my mouse isn't showing up. Let's see, one of the joys of having a... There we go. Much better. Thank you, Nancy, for that. Uh, by the way, a big round of applause to Nancy and the other volunteers. Uh, they do a heck of a job. Um, you do not see them sweating, but believe me, they work their butts off for these shows to make it look easy. Anyway, I had a lot of my career where I was working on open source software because I was hired to finish projects that had been started by someone else and they ran out of budget money. Uh, by the way, if you do ever come to Texas, I believe this is outside of comfort where we have our own Stonehenge. And we have our own Easter Island figureheads. Uh, anyway, I'm now a MySQL community manager. I started off in the certification team. Uh, been part of the MySQL AB to Sun Microsystems acquisition. Then we got bought by Oracle left for a little bit to go off to a Columnar database engine company called CalPot, which has the InfinityDB uh, Columnar data store. And let's see if I can get this to advance now. Ah, now I know what I got to do. The joys of virtual sessions. Well, maybe not. There we go. Uh, like I said, I'm now on the MySQL community team. And uh, I uh, have the MySQL 8.0 DBA certification. Uh, we are currently developing the developer certification and uh, I do live in Texas, uh, north of Fort Worth and west of Dallas in a small town. And I do have the required hound dog and pickup truck. So our agenda today, uh, first thing, if you have questions, please, please um, shoot them up. I'd rather answer your question when it comes up than have you wait and get distracted or something gets cut off or something else happens. I'd rather answer it as it comes up. So please ask questions. I have a window going to notice the, the chat thing. 
Uh, I'd love to make this interactive. Uh, one of my problems with these virtual shows is I miss the audience interaction. I used to be a stand-up comic, and I, I really miss that. Also, I'd like to know what you want to see from MySQL in 2020 and 2021. So MySQL with the release of 8.0 now two years ago, uh, went on the CL, CICD bandwagon like a lot of the rest of you have. Uh, the programs that we're offering now are much more complex than the software back in the 5.5 era. Uh, we've done a lot of work to implement new features as plugins, which means if you don't like them, you can pull the plug. Uh, very easy to remove. Uh, we've had a great ability now to do a lot of benchmarking on our software before it ever sees your computer. So it's a much more reliable, much more rugged piece of software. And we're able to get the new features into your hands much faster. And I believe it's a much, much better product than what we offered in the past. By the way, one of the things we did is we have these quarterly releases and we release new versions of everything, uh, new features, bug fixes, enhancements, uh, some deprecations. And the old problem we used to have in the past was if you're running MySQL Server 5.6 and you had the ODBC connector 1.4 and you were connecting through uh, an early thing of a MySQL router, uh, they had all these different version numbers. It was kind of hard to trace who was doing what to whom. So it's now much much easier to um, just remember that uh, if you're running server 8020, uh, use the shell 8020 workbench or the connector. It makes it a lot easier on us and on you. So let's take a look at the MySQL community server. Uh, yes, it's still free. We do have an enterprise version that comes with a support contract that you can get. The price is extremely reasonable, um, probably a lot less than you're paying for things like um, copies of Office software from uh, various vendors. Now, I'm going to march backwards through time here. And just uh, two weeks ago, 8.0.20 was released. The big news here is that we improved our hash joins. I'll, I'll go into hash joins in a, in a slide coming up. Uh, we now have uh, inner non-equi joins, semi-joins, anti-joins, left outer joins, and right outer joins. Uh, very big thing for those of you who are doing a lot of equijoint type work. Uh, also, we added a new double write buffer and binary log compression for replication, and we improved CATS. Uh, CAT stands for Contention Aware Transaction Scheduler. Uh, several years ago, University of Michigan put out a paper on how to handle hot rows, hot columns in your data. Uh, CATS does not switch on until you, it notices there's contention for certain rows or certain columns. Uh, to boil down a very nice analytic uh, academic paper down to one sentence, it's if you have greedy uh, processes looking for more resources, they have an algorithm for handling that. And that algorithm uh, really does speed up uh, your processes if you do have those hot rows and columns. Now, going a little bit of detail on the double write buffer, uh, one of the things that MySQL did to uh, help with ACID compliance was make sure that everything was written down twice. Uh, that way, if something crashed, you had a very, very good chance of being able to recover. Uh, NODB is as rugged as a storage engine as they come, but uh, there were still some problems we had uh, with that. It was also part of the regular system table space, which means it's contending for resources there. Uh, so if you want to, you can take the double write buffers and put them on another device that you have uh, outside of your data directory. Uh, the default is in your data, dire data directory. So what happens is as your, your working set, your, your data that you have in memory kind of hits memory size, uh, things tend to start slowing down, uh, as you can see on the red line there, uh, because things have to get copied out and it has to be written twice. Well, with the new double write buffer we, and moving stuff around, we were able to, as you can see with the blue line, greatly increase this. It's a uh, very handy feature. Uh, binary log compression. Uh, those of you running replication know that all your transactions get sent from the primary to the secondary boxes. Well, now they're compressed before they go and they can be handled while they're still compressed. Uh, makes it a lot easier on your network band space and your disk space. 
way back in January. Hey, remember when we can go get haircuts and sit in a restaurant? Um, we introduced a couple of interesting features. Uh, too many login attempts, tents, and you can lock the account. Uh, the table statement along with row. I'll go into a little more detail of that. Uh, limits and recurs recursive common table expressions and an alias on duplicate key, duplicate key statements. Okay, failed login test. Someone's just trying to hammer your system and you want to knock them out. Uh, as you can see, the first example there, we're creating a user and we put in failed login attempts, number three. And once they hit that third failed login attempt, that account is locked for three days. Now, if you need uh, finer granularity than that, let me know. I'd love, love to take that to the engineer team, engineering team and see what they say. Uh, by the way, the second statement you see there, alter user. Uh, this is how you can do it if you already have an account up there. And in this case, the password lock time is unbounded, which means once it gets locked, someone has to manually come in and unlock the account. Now, this might seem a little weird, but it's part of the SQL standard. Uh, the two statements you see on the top left in blue are equivalent. Uh, we've now introduced the tables and row uh, syntax. So instead of typing select star from T, you can just now type table T. Uh, doesn't seem as uh, poetic to me, but uh, that's also there. Also, you see in the middle of the screen, uh, insert into T1 using the row uh, option. Uh, that makes it a little bit cleaner read. I Hopefully this will be get more adopted, but those two statements are also equivalent. Uh, in the past, if you were um, dealing with records where you had a duplicate key, you had to do something like on the bottom where you had to use the values function to be able to get the value of the current val uh, current uh, index you're trying to put in there. And here we're trying to do a increment on that. Um, now on the top, you see that we have the keyword new, sort of like in a trigger, which makes it a lot easier if you're handling this type of, of work. Way back in October, uh, we introduced random passwords, uh, explain, analyze, hash joins, um, updated our compression, and the Enterprise Edition started supporting the HashiCorp vault. So if you're running uh, at rest encryption, uh, we work with HashiCorp. So let's dig into uh, the random password. Uh, that's one of my blogs on this. If you have a corporation where you have to change your passwords every X days, every password has to be Y length with Z number of uppercase characters, uh, A number of uh, special characters and all that, MySQL can support that. And rather than tie all sorts of different pieces of software together to try to enforce that, you can have the MySQL server generate this for you. Uh, in the example here, we're creating a random password and you can see that it returns the username and the host and that random password. Hash joins. Hash joins are equijoins where you're doing um, join column, join table B to table A, where C1 equals CX. And as you can see on that little nice uh, diagram, uh, blue is our normal, uh, branch and loop uh, search. And with these other equijoins, you can see that, um, I'm sorry, the, the blue is the is the uh, the hash, but the orange is our traditional uh, branch and, and loop. Much faster if you're doing equijoins. By the way, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 8020, which has been out for two weeks now, has much improved on this. Now, if you're used to tuning your queries, you've run into the explain command. You prepend explain on top in front of your query and it goes out to the optimizer and says, okay, how would you optimize this statement and uh, go out and get the data and report back to me? Well, without the word analyze in there, it's a uh, historical guess based on the statistics that are on hand. Uh, think of it as like a GPS in your car. Now, GPSs, if you're probably all well aware, are great things, but unless it has the latest data, it doesn't know there's a car accident down the end of the street 
also doesn't know about the traffic jam on the freeway, and it's gonna write you, try to route you through those. Uh, so if you have a lot of volatile data, that information from, that the optimizer is trying to use is not great. Now with explain analyze, what it does, and this is a, a big difference, is it actually goes out there and runs the query and gives you the expected versus the actual. By the way, if your expected versus actual is way, way, way off, please run analyze table on there. Very, very handy to to uh, to see what's going on. Okay, back in July, um, we added multi-valued indexes, uh, JSON document validation, dual passwords, uh, the clone plugin, and a faster UTF MB MB4 um, collation. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're interested, I'll have a Ask Me Anything later in this, this year, actually June 2nd, on the document validation. But let's take a look at these uh, features that I put in there. By the way, I'm not going over everything. I'm just going to the stuff that interests me that I, I know would interest developers. Okay, multi-valued indexes. Why is this important? Well, in the past, there was a limit. You could have one row and an index for one row and a table. Uh, you couldn't exceed that. Well, we start doing JSON documents and suddenly you have a list of serial numbers that make up a component or, or uh, various phone numbers for one individual. And you wanna be able to index that. Well, with multi-value indexes, you can do that. So there's no longer that tie one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, by the way, um, some testing that I've done until you hit about 20 million records, um, this may not pay off for you, but this is the time independent on uh, what your data actually looks like. See if there's any questions out there. JSON, I love JSON. Uh, it's great. Uh, unfortunately, I'm an old DBA and I'm used to uh, having fairly strict typing. So if you're trying to put a string into an integer field, it complains and doesn't let you put the bad data in there. Now, catching bad data before it actually goes into your system is a lot cheaper than trying to fish it out and correct it later. So the JSON schema.org folks came up with some proposals that we've uh, implemented. And um, if you look in the middle of the, the, the slide there, you'll see a function JSON schema valid. What this is, is in there is an exemplar document of what we want to have checked. In this case, uh, we're checking for the object and that object out there is called my age. Now it's gonna come in hopefully as a type number, the minimum value of 28, maximum number of 99. So 27 or under or 100 and over is not gonna get into the database. By the way, you also see that this is required. So if you wanna make sure that you get that piece of information, it's in there. Otherwise the system will let in. So we go to insert two records, uh, go insert a my age of 27 and we get to get told my age in range is violated. Uh, the second example there, we have a one that's in the right range and the data gets in there. So this really does help you keep bad data out of your database. Uh, this is something traditionally you can't do with JSON. And I think we're the only ones implementing it right now, but I hopefully uh, the JSON schema.org folks will get to uh, become an approved standard. Dual passwords. Um, this is the one that the gentleman in the UK was getting upset with me uh, a couple months ago. Um, basically what you do is you alter a user and you type in a new password, which is identified by, and you add retain current password. So now either password works to get into the account. Well, how does this help Dave? Well, imagine your, your boss comes to you and said, Hey, um, I know we have somewhere north of 800 programs out there for our, our current environment, but we need to change the passwords on all of them because somehow it's either security time or someone mentioned it on Zoom or something like that. So rather than doing Emacs space star dot PHP or whatever uh, language you use, uh, what you can do is you, you can move gracefully a group of programs over at a time. So you can change them from the old password to the new password very effectively and very easily. And as you can see down at the bottom, when you get everything converted over, uh, you just do another alter user 
and discard old password. Boom. Now in the middle screen there, you can see what's actually recorded, the uh, hash of the password that's actually recorded within the record in the mysql.user table. Way back a year ago, uh, we got rid of the MySQL upgrade script, uh, added constraint checks, and the C API started supporting uh, asynchronous non-blocking uh, communication to the server. And we added explain format equals tree. You've actually seen a little bit of an example of that up, a, up above with explain analyze. So the big one I want to explain is MySQL upgrade script. Every so often before uh, 8016, someone would do an upgrade and they get on Stack Overflow or on Slack saying, hey, I upgraded my server, but I'm getting all these missing columns, missing whatever things on my server. What's going on? Well, you used to have to run the MySQL upgrade script after you changed your binaries. This would go out there to the system tables and the metadata and update them to the latest format. Now what we do is we check the version of the metadata. Uh, if it needs to have MySQL upgrade run, it will do so automatically. This is a uh, bonus as you don't have to remember to do that script. No chance to forget it. Constraint checks. Uh, in the past, MySQL had constraint checks. We just ignored them. Um, we have a couple examples here. Uh, we're creating a table. And the first check we have is we're going to check that C1 is not equal to C2. Uh, second one is C1 is greater than 10, and uh, so on and so forth. Now, I'd like to point out the one that's C2 in constraint, and it has a name in there, C2 underscore positive, which is going to check that C2 is greater than zero. Please use this format. Uh, there's nothing like being, being uh, called at three o'clock in the morning saying there's some sort of constraint check going on and you don't get a good error message. If you put a name on there, it will tell you that C2 underscore positive uh, was violated. Uh, the other ones will just tell you that there was a constraint check violated. Okay, way, way, way back, uh, January, February, 2019, uh, we actually had 8014, 8015 come out because there was a problem uh, with a supporting library. I believe it was secure socket layers, and we had to do a quick release. Uh, we added an admin TCP IP port. Uh, the default version, uh, port number is 33062. Uh, if you shut off communications to the regular ports, you need this to be able to, or you can use this to be able to go out and uh, admin the box. Uh, now your, court, your account does need the service connection admin privilege. We also fixed JSON array ag and JSON object ag to work with windowing functions. So if you're aggregating data, either JSON or non-JSON that you want in JSON format, uh, those will now work with windowing functions. And we added set persist and set persist only. Uh, set persist is great. Um, I believe I go into detail on that a little bit later. And lateral derived tables. Let's go into that. Subqueries. Uh, anyone who's trying to learn SQL runs into a problem with subqueries. Uh, that's a query embedded within another query. And there's correlated and uncorrelated and a whole bunch of other stuff. And they're very frustrating to write. Uh, that's why we started supporting CTEs two years ago, common table expressions. They're a lot easier and a lot nicer and easier to comprehend than just standard subquery. Now, in this example, you'll notice the subquery here is in red. And it's all preceded by the word lateral. Now, previously to this, if I was trying to get that CC column out of the subquery, I'd get a violation error. Uh, this always used to uh, grind my gears, as they say. Now, in this example, we're able to say, OK, this is referencing the subquery. So the optimizer knows how to handle this. Okay, so what has MySQL basically been doing uh, in the two years and a month since 8.0.11 uh, became generally available? Well, we put all your metadata in the data dictionary. Well, what does that mean for you? Well, you're not tying up inodes with all the little files holding metadata. It's all kept in, in an InnoDB table, uh, crash proof. And the side effect of that is you can now have millions of tables within a schema. The bad news is you can now have millions of tables within a schema. 
I uh, also added histograms. This is a uh, variation of the idea on indexes. Indexes are great. They get you right to the record or records you need. However, every time you do uh, an add, an update, or delete, uh, the table that holds all the indexing information has to be updated. Histograms are kind of like setting up all your data in rows. You have all the A's in this row, all the B's in this row, all the C's in this row. And um, when you're looking for someone in the A, you know what row to go to. Uh, vastly speeds up the optimizer. Uh, resource groups, if you're running on a multi-CPU machine, you could say, okay, CPUs two and three are gonna be for batch processing only, uh, set down their priority, and any batch jobs you have can go there. Other machines get faster uh, response. I mentioned cats earlier. Uh, better JSON support. We had a JSON pretty uh, improved JSON table and uh, done a whole lot of other work there. Uh, something else we did is that it can do partial updates. So if you're only updating a certain uh, key in a document, we're not rewriting everything when you do an update, which was the case with 5.7. Uh, UTF-8 MB4 full support. This gives you the uh, CJK language support and emojis. I also improved InnoDB cluster. I'll mention that a little bit more. Uh, much improvement on XDEV API, which is our no SQL protocol. Uh, it is a true protocol, not an ORM. Uh, came up with a new temporary engine that's uh, between 10 and 20% faster, depending on what you're doing, and a lot better performance. So uh, we wanted to give you a much better product with more flexibility. Uh, giving you better SQL with windowing functions, continue uh, common table expressions, derived tables, constraint checks, and the table and row functionality. Uh, much better NoSQL with JSON validation, improved XDEV API, uh, better JSON support, JSON table, which is an interesting function. It lets you take your unstructured JSON data and temporarily cast it into an SQL table for processing with, with SQL functions like windowing functions and all that. Now, I wish I had an update for this. I'm, I'm going to have to ask for one. Uh, ADO has had the fastest adoption of any previous of any release that we've had uh, up to now. Also, we'd like you to take a look at InnoDB Cluster. Imagine your application is that little blue box uh, up there where you have your application running, and in there you have a, your MySQL connector, and you can run MySQL router on that. It's a very lightweight level four router. Uh, your application really shouldn't know anything about the data layer underneath. It should just uh, know that talks to the connector to it, and that's about it. Underneath that, you can have a simple uh, three-node MySQL InnoDB cluster like you see here. Uh, one machine's primary for reads and writes. The other two are secondary for reads only. MySQL router will do some load balancing for you. Uh, this is all administered by the new MySQL shell. Uh, something we added in the previous release uh, was InnoDB replica set. If you've normally set up MySQL replication, you know it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, you have to make a copy of your current data, copy it over to the other machine, set it up. Um, hopefully you're running GTID so it knows how to, to uh, run that. Well, the big change here is this gives you access to the clone plugin. Well, what's the clone plugin, Dave? Well, this is an extremely, extremely fast way of cap capturing data on one InnoDB table space and copying it over to another machine. Uh, it is absolutely brutally fast. Uh, it's not a choke point and it makes provisioning a new machine very, very simple. Uh, you set up the hardware, set up your replication accounts using the uh, previous slides information for the uh, replication and boom, it copies it over. Also, I'd like to talk about our new shell. Uh, the old shell is great, but it's kind of getting long in the tooth. It's 25 years old. It's an advanced client and code editor. Uh, one of the handy things about it has a great help uh, system built into it with command completion. So if you don't remember the arguments, you could type in a letter or two and hit tab and show you the option, options. Has three modes, uh, structured query language like you'd expect, Python and JavaScript. So if you have libraries for either of those two languages, you can include those in there and help manipulate your data with that. It's our admin tool for replica set and NMDB cluster. As I mentioned earlier, it has a 5.7 to 8.0 up upgrade checker, and it has a bulk loader. Uh, works in parallel, very fast for comma-separated, tab-separated, and JSON data. Now, when you use the new shell, uh, one of the first things you'll notice is that it's uh, not monochrome anymore. 
And in this case, you'll see that first little uh, yellow block with the black letters JS in there. Uh, that's telling you we're talking JavaScript and we connect into the server. And if you look down a couple lines, you'll see that uh, the next little yellow line tells us where we logged into and what schema we're talking to. And below that, I typed slash S to get the status of the system. Uh, please note that on the SSL line that we're using TLS by default. We turn on security because we want the communications between your server and your client to be as secure as possible out of the box. Uh, we set up all the keys for you. You can use your own keys if you want. I also noticed down a little bit further that all the communications are in UTF-8 MB4, which is the default. By the way, our, our new API lets you um, bypass a lot of the, the overhead and prerequisites you used to have to have on a uh, MySQL server or any other relational server to uh, save your data. Uh, in this case, we uh, use backslash use to say what schema we want to use, or we could have just uh, done a uh, session.create schema. Uh, once we pick a schema to use, you'll notice that I type in DB, and that tells me the pointer to our current schema. And under there, I can create a document collation, db.create collection A. And if I type in db.a, it tells you that it's a collection. Underneath that, we do a db.a.add, and we're adding a key and a value. And if I do a find, you'll see that it's saved our data. Haven't gone out, had to go out there and set up relational tables, indexes, uh, normalized data or all that. It starts saving your data in JSON right away. Uh, very fast, very flexible. If you want to access this from SQL side, you can do that later or at the same time. You can also um, make uh, copy the stuff from the JSON side over to the SQL side uh, with a generated column, give you ultimate flexibility. Now, I mentioned earlier the uh, about the bulk loader. Uh, first started with a Python script. Uh, one of our community members, uh, the data charmer, came up with and was basically import the regular expression library and the files, read the file line by line, write it out line by line. Uh, our engineers thought that was great, and they came up with a bulk loader that worked very fast. Uh, as you can see here, I'm saying, okay, here's my file where it has the information and I tell it optionally what schema and collection I want to go into, and it loaded it pretty quickly. Well, they went back to the drawing bar and came back with a parallel bulk loader, uh, which will run up to, I think, five threads to do parallel bulk loading. So if you have CSV, TSV, or JSON data to load, uh, it's very, very, very quick. And this is an example of running the parallel loader. Uh, as you can see here, it only ran three threads. I've seen it run uh, five. I think that's the limit. So um, this is kind of a, a cute little cartoon that was kind of the bane of every uh, DBA's um, life for many years. Uh, basically, the old rule was you set your buffer size, your buffer pool size to 70 to 85% of memory. And the past several years, um, we've been a lot better at, at figuring out what your hardware is actually set to. So at this point, I'd, I'd love to uh, hear some feedback from you folks on what you want to see in the next releases of MySQL. Uh, I'll give you my guesses first. Um, these are my private ideas, not blessed by Oracle or MySQL management. Um, the Enterprise Edition has been doing a lot the past several years with security. And right now your bosses are talking cloud, but they're buying security. Uh, you're gonna see a lot more support for JSON and the graphical information systems. We use the Boost libraries here. Uh, in, before 5.7, we used our own libraries and the Boost folks have much better C++ libraries. And it does a full ellipsoidal wraparound 3D world. Uh, very, very impressive. I think it supports 8,000 graphical reference identification uh, identifiers. Very interesting. Uh, you're going to see a lot more functionality for InnoDB cluster. Um, you're going to see big improvements in the XDev API. Uh, more features are being added to the shell. As a matter, matter of fact, I'm testing some of those hopefully later today. Now, performance problems uh, caused by mutexes. Uh, 25 years ago when they uh, wrote the code, originally it had some uh, sticking points. We're slowly hammering those away, uh, grinding them down, making them nicely polished. You're going to see a lot more emphasis on Kubernetes-ish like deployments. 
Also, I think you're going to have a hard time finding DBAs because the job is shifting. Uh, the scope is going to widen and be uh, less of a, uh, a, a database plumber. But meanwhile, I think bad data architectures are still going to plague us. Um, you, you can't make a thoroughbred horse out of a pig. So um, you're going to see a lot of folks have to go back and recarve out their data. By the way, speaking of uh, JSON, I uh, wrote a book, uh, MySQL and JSON, Practical Programming Guide. Uh, this is featured on sale at Amazon on a regular basis, which means instead of getting three cents a book, I get a penny and a half. Woo! Uh, by the way, you'll never go rich writing a computer book. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank you. Uh, my email is david.stokes at oracle.com. On Twitter, I'm uh, uh, Dan Strong. It's nice analogy. <laughs> Hopefully that's the uh, throw a bit out of the pig. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll stay around for the QA as long as I can. Once again, thanks to Nas Nancy Bailey for being my uh, my monitor in this. And if you have any questions, please see me. I'll be at the booth later today, our virtual booth. And uh, with that, I want to thank you. I hope you all have a good and safe time. Uh, thank you, Kevin Eldridge. And once again, if you need to get a hold of me at Stoker or david.stokes at oracle.com. And with that, thank you, and please have a great day.